If you don't know how to do this skill, then you're not going to be able to access most of the A-level course. It is incredibly important. And I'm talking about resolving forces. So let's have a look at an example. Um, I've got a block which is going to be dragged along the surface at a constant velocity. Um, and it's going to be dragged along by a rope that's got a tension, which is 3,200 newtons here. And the question is, what is the resistive force due to friction on the block? So let's label it first of all. Um, it's acting in the right direction. Um, now, to be able to understand this, we've got an angle. So we have to redraw our forces with a force triangle so I've got my T force here is my hypotenuse and I'm making a right angle triangle where 20 degrees is the angle now hypotenuse we said is 3200 um, but F is pointing in the horizontal direction okay now because it's a constant velocity that means it has to be balanced out by the force in the left horizontal direction so let's find out what that is that happens to be my adjacent angle um, side of my right angle triangle so if it's adjacent we're going to use cos cos of Sokotoa and we can say cos 20 is equal to my adjacent side divided by 3200 so therefore to find out that overall force in that direction I'm going to multiply cos 20 by 3500 which in this case happens to be 3007 newtons so Top tips, redraw things as a triangle, make sure you know your trig rules really well, um, and then you can figure out what any part of that equation might be. So if you can do it, I'd be asked to do it as a scale drawing, um, but more likely you're asked to get to Pythagoras and triangle. A really common situation in physics is to get an inclined plane. You'll get these in A-level maths as well, meaning I've got an object on a slope. Now, we're going to assume the box is an equilibrium. So in this case, we're going to assume it's stationary. Um, I haven't told you there's any velocity. So what we can do if we assume it's stationary is we can start labeling these forces and then start to balance them out. So I've got weight going down. Now, up the slope is friction. That's what stops it moving down the slope. And we've also got our normal reaction force, which is perpendicular to the slope. So I can label that R for reaction force. Now, the tricky bit about this whole problem, uh, once I've got the weight labelled, um, is that these are all at kind of funny angles to each other. So it is absolutely essential that we are kind of redrawing our, these forces in a triangle to figure out what we need to work out. So I'm going to redraw the weight going downwards. That's going to be my hypotenuse of the triangle. Now, be really careful with this next um, triangle. It's not the bit in the nose of the slope. We actually redraw the angle up here. Due to similar angles, that will also equal 30 degrees. And um, the angle that's kind of continuing down in the same plane as R, um, it's going to be equal to R because it's equilibrium and the other one going in the same plane as the slope is going to be equal to F. So now I can work out what these extra components are because I know what the weight is. Okay, and I haven't given it numbers this time. I'm just going to leave it as MG. I'm going to try and find out what the adjacent and hypotenuse are. So first thing is friction. Now that's acting up the slope. That's my opposite. So opposite Sokotoa means it's going to be sine, MG sine 30. And the reaction going up the slope, sorry, uh, perpendicular to the slope is going to be MG cos 30. So I've drawn the triangle and I've found general expressions for those terms. The final question we're going to have a go at is an exam question. Um, so have a look at the diagram on the screen. This time we've got a skier. Um, now a skier um, is going to be moving at a constant velocity, which is really important when we talk about the forces. Um, the question asks us to label what Q and P are. So label them first of all. Um, now Q is the reaction force. We've just covered that going perpendicular to the slope. In this case, um, P could be drag um, or air resistance or a frictional force, we could say overall. Now later on in the question, I ask you to work out the value. So let's work those out. The weight is 800. 50 newtons so let's draw out our triangle again i've got my hypotenuse the weight 850 newtons going down and i'm going to have the um, component going perpendicular to the slope um, is going to be q to make a hash of drawing it here and that's at the same angle as the slope which is 35 degrees so um, if I was going to work out the values for P and Q, I've got P is the opposite. So that's going to be 850, the weight times by sine 35, which happens to equal 487.5 or rounding it to two sig figs is 490. And Q is going to be the adjacent. So that's cos 850 times cos 35 gives me nine, uh, 696 or 700 to two sig figs. OK, um, so you get more complex exam questions, but make sure you know those basics. Otherwise, you won't be able to uh, start on those at all, really. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.